Thank you, Richard. It's really a dream come true to be here at Beyond Baroque. And I urge you to support them. I've been a supporter since, off and on since the 70s, so it's a great organization. I started Green Tar Press in 2013. I attended a workshop on self-publishing, and she said, you know, it'll look a whole lot better if you name the press something than just publish it yourself. So I thought that would be a great idea, so I started a press. And uh, I couldn't come up with the name for it, and I, a friend of mine is a feminist, I'm a feminist, but she said, let's, how about a female goddess? I thought, well, that's a great idea, so I was going through them, and uh, came upon Green Tara. And her, uh, what she stands for, really spoke to me. And I felt like we wanted to be a press that was up to some good in the world. There's plenty of people that want to write murder mysteries, and that's fine. I, I might want to read those myself, but we didn't. We weren't going to do that ourselves. So we, uh, this is our mission statement. Green Tara, the mother of liberation, is an enlightened female Buddha. So people think that Buddha was the guy's name, and actually Buddha is a state of consciousness that men or women can embody. So the Green Tara is a enlightened female Buddha in the tantric tradition of Tibet. She represents compassion, healing, and love. And it is believed that by focusing on her, we will develop these qualities in ourselves. Green Tara is the Buddha of enlightened activity, representing the virtues of success in work and achievements. At Green Tara Press, we are dedicated to publishing works that promote compassion, healing, and love, and awaken and inspire readers to enlightened action. We share the tantric vision that all is sacred. And I have a novel that's going to be finished someday that I've been working on for since 2001, and I have had 50 rejections, which um, I've told is not bad. And uh, the last uh, rejection said, I think this novel could be big. You need to totally rewrite it, however. <laughs> so in the meantime, I decided to uh, do some work. My day job is I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. I'm in private practice in Los Angeles. So I, I was doing some promotional type writing for my business and um, self-help kinds of things. And um, so this book came as a collection of short articles. I started uh, writing these short articles. I was actually hired by sex.com. Uh, who knew there was a sex.com? Mm -hmm. I didn't, but they uh, contacted me one day and asked me if I would, they wanted to, at the time they weren't just a porn site, they wanted to have some legitimate uh, writers writing about sex and health and so on. And uh, there was another PhD on the site, so I thought, well, I'll be in good company. And I started writing these short um, articles for them, and I found that this 400-word uh, essay was actually quite interesting. It sort of like gave me like, I think it was like, sort of like writing a sonnet. Like you have this, <laughs> this, this puzzle to unwrap while you're writing. So I wrote 100 short pieces like that, and I collected them here. So. This is a great book for people with a modern attention span. Who like you don't have to commit to reading a book. You can just sit down and read a little thing, and then send a text back. So. <laughs> so I'll read you one piece from this. It's called "Personal Growth and the Ostrich Egg." It was hot that summer, hotter than four kids from the chilly Pacific Northwest could comprehend. Our dad had gotten a math scholarship for six weeks in Champaign-Urbana, Illinois. So he and mom had piled all of his kids into the Volkswagen van and headed off cross country to a planet very unlike our own. It was way too hot to play outside, so every day we escaped to the air-conditioned shopping center across the street. Malls were not yet ubiquitous. They seemed jammed full of mystical treasures. And our parents let us go over unchaperoned. The immensity of this freedom was almost inconceivable to us. The most magical treat of all was right inside the front door, an aquarium that held six chicken eggs and a, gi and a gigantic four-pounder from an ostrich. Listed on the pedestal below were the dates they were expected to hatch. It was only a matter of weeks, but in the time frame of children, forever. We waited every single day that summer for those eggs to hatch 
And every single day we would run over to the mall to see if it was time yet. Waiting, waiting, we waited, and not too patiently. The ostrich egg turned out to be a dud. But every one of us, my brothers and sister and I, remember the best day of the summer as the one when we arrived and the chickens were finally hatching. We city kids watched the natural miracle as they picked their way out of their shells, wet and squeaking. We found out it wasn't all sanitized, Disney-fied as we've been led to expect by the cartoons where adorable baby chicks burst out of their shells spotless and downy. It took untold effort for them to facilitate their own births. And one ship was bloody from being cut by its shell. I often recount this story from my patients who are grappling with why it all hurts so much. The way of personal and spiritual growth takes untold effort and is often bloody. It doesn't just spring out fully formed because you say a few affirmations or read shelves of self-help books. It's a painful process. There's no two ways about it. Quote, your pain is the breaking of the shell that encloses your understanding, Khalil Gibran wrote. Just, in the, just as in the birth process of the chicks, the pain and struggle involved in the birthing of oneself is not an aberration, but the most natural thing in the world. Then I wrote, uh, so I wrote this book, and then I, um, uh, through my own um, single life, of, uh, so I was a licensed marriage and family therapist, but I had two failed marriages, and I, um, <laughs> my dating life was a disaster, so I set out to uh, master the dating process. And I had had uh, experiences early living in an ashram in India where things were much different, how men and women met each other. And so I was trying to reconcile the tantric way of meeting with Western online dating. <laughs> which couldn't be two far opposite extremes. So I uh, worked on it for three and a half years, met my true love, and I, uh, and I thought maybe that could help some other people. So I wrote this little book on tantric dating. I'm out, uh, I've been asked to speak on it quite a few places around town. So if you're interested, if you're single and suffering, as I was, <laughs> you might like this book. Um, this is a little meditation exercise in the, um, in the back of this book. I thought I'd read it. It's called The Perfect Beloved in This Moment. You've heard it many times. Truth is in the present moment. The past is made up of memories which are not always accurate, as you may have experienced. And the future hasn't happened yet, so it's all conjecture. Sandwiched in between stands the present moment as the only reality. I had an overwhelming experience of this sitting quietly at the burning ghats, the place where Indians burn their dead. I like to go sit there and gaze out at the river with the cows, cowherds, and women washing colorful fabrics on the banks. The sun was shining overhead with only a few clouds, the sounds of life murmuring far away from this temple of death, the air rich and pungent as it is in India. Suddenly an awareness shot up my spine all is perfect exactly as it is. It filled my body with a streaming vibration for I don't know how long. An actual, tangible experience, not something I read in a book or idle thoughts of the mind. My life changed forever. If it's true that everything's perfect in the present moment, love must be here too. If I'm not aware of it, my mind and my prejudices are keeping me from knowing. If the present moment is perfect, any person I am with is the perfect beloved in this moment. Not necessarily the next moment, or a month, or a year from now, but who really knows? Practice seeing whomever you are with in this moment as your perfect beloved. If you're sitting at the coffee bean and a 50-year-old man is sitting next to you, Practice saying, saying silently to yourself, this is my perfect beloved at this moment. If you're receiving a massage and enjoying the stranger's hand caressing your body, say to yourself, this is my lover at this moment. If you're on a date and not feeling attracted, you don't have to be to do this exercise. Say to yourself, at this moment, this is where love is. 
It is up to me at this moment whether I recognize love or not. Everything is perfect in the present moment. This person is my perfect beloved in this moment. This is my lover in this moment. In this moment, this is where love is. It is up to me at this moment whether I recognize love or not. Thank you. Okay, so I, was, uh, I just wanted to say that um, the books are all available in the bookstore, everybody's books, and 50% uh, of that is uh, a donation to Beyond Baroque, which we're all happy to do. So please support Beyond Baroque and our authors. I just want to say for the future, we have coming up a, a new book from Sandy. Um, Bob sent me an idea for a book. I'm like, definitely we want to read that book, so please give him nudges too. And um, I'm going to finish that novel. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot. Thanks.